So, now, we talked about Windows Azure, and we talked about where Microsoft are going with it, particularly, not just in Ireland, you know, there's a lot of people around Europe are th thinking Azure is just, you know, Microsoft's public cloud, it's too big, and it's, it's too expensive for what we need as a smaller country or what our customers need, okay? So, Microsoft have listened, in my view, and I thought this was a pretty clever pro um, product. So, basically, they're using System Center Virtual Machine Manager, 2012 SP1. So they do all the virtual networking stuff that we saw the guys showing earlier on. You build your private clouds. John's going to do a little bit on private cloud uh, strategies later on. So you build up your internal private cloud. So essentially, from a System Center perspective, a private cloud is, is like a logical grouping or a logical resource pool, um, if you like, of internal resources in your IT uh, infrastructure. So what they do is they have, so we just go back there. So there's a private cloud usage scenario. So you go, you configure your fabric, configure your cloud. So you've got your little private cloud object in, in Virtual Machine Manager, and you might have SCOM and whatever else. And you know, you're using it to live migrate VMs and, and migrate storage between your Hyper-V clusters and stuff like that. And that's pretty cool. And then you know, you've got Microsoft saying, why don't you put it up into the public cloud? And you're saying, well, I'm not going to put it up there. No, because it's just, it's just too unfamiliar. Forget about cost for a moment, but, you know, and forget about the Patriot Act and all this, you know, the US kind of reading all our data. If, if we just park all that, which I, I'm confident that Microsoft will, will resolve those, um, those doubts for people. You know, if you've deployed your private cloud and Microsoft are saying, look, go to Azure. There's, there's huge benefits. We're going to make it worth your while financially. You know, you're going to save a, a, a huge amount of time. And, you know, and if, if, if that argument is, is quite compelling and, and you're thinking, you know, I might look at it, what you might also then say is when you see the, the Windows Azure portal, it's completely unfamiliar because you'd be used to using your system center or your Hyper-V manager, whatever. So what Microsoft has done is they've released, and this, is, this has been out since January, they've released a mouthful of a product called Windows Azure Services for Windows Server. Used to be called Project Catal, which I prefer to call or refer to it. And this basically, it's very, very clever. The, 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 the end goal for this is that it's a framework. And Catal, if you don't mind me calling it that, um, what that does is that sits in front of System Center, if you like, and it works with Orchestrator. If you like, you can configure it a number of ways, but this is Microsoft's recommended way, we can see here. And it can provide or deliver resources as a self-service, and you can use chargeback if you, if you so wish, but it basically provides a portal for the system center environment. Now, you can certainly use the other portals. You can use App Controller, VMM, Service Manager. You can use all them if you wish, but this essentially, and particularly if you're into the hosting, uh, if, you're, if you're working with a hosting service provider, um, this is definitely something you need to be looking at. But the clever thing I think here is the very last line. They say here we're lowering barriers to adoption. How they're doing that is that Project Catal, or Windows Azure Services for Windows Server, it looks exactly like the Windows Azure portal. Exactly like it. So the concept I'm guessing Microsoft are going to hope that people do is eventually, and this could be a few years down the road, People are live migrating VMs using that portal, the on-premise portal, to live migrating machines or you know spinning up VMs on their on-premise cloud. And then when Microsoft flicked the switch to make that integrate with the public cloud, then you know what? If it makes more sense, why not live migrate them up there? So the barriers to adoption of the public cloud have dropped. And that's a message that Microsoft are definitely trying to push. I think we'll see a lot more of that. Um, over the coming year. So that's something, uh, something of interest.